Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our virtual Sunday School. It is a blessing to be here to share the Word of God with you. First, we want to give an honor to God. We also want to recognize our pastor, uh, Bishop Ronald K. Harris, our ministers, and all those that are out there with us in virtual land. Thank you for joining in with us this morning. Our lesson this morning is coming out of John, the 18th chapter, verses 28 through 40. And the title of our lesson is, Pilate, What is Truth? Let's read these verses we have before us this morning. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, mm -hmm. lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusations bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, saying, Thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it to thee? Pilate answered, I am I a Jew. Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews? But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all, but ye have a custom, that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Our golden text for this morning is verse 36. It says, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, mm -hmm. then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews? But now is my kingdom not from hence. Our facts today is to be clear that Jesus was tried by the Roman authorities to fulfill prophecy. The principle is to recognize Jesus as a king of divine origin, bearing witness to the truth. And what we want to apply is to submit to the rule of Jesus over our lives and to know that objective knowledge is possible through a relationship with Christ. In order to complete their plan to execute Jesus, the Jewish leaders needed to get the Romans on board. This was quite an unusual alliance since the Jews detested the Romans. However, when it served their purpose, they were willing to work with them. When it served their purpose, they are willing to work with the Romans. But if it didn't serve their purpose, they didn't want to have anything to do with them. They didn't want to go into the judgment hall 
because they said it would defile them. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But they waited on Pilate to come out. And then it was time for the Passover. So they didn't want to go to the Passover defiled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. What can come on. Yeah. What can they do? Yeah. They, they are making a great mistake by getting someone else to do their dirty, dirty work. work. We good at that. Yeah. We good at that. Yeah. A lot of us sit there and we get someone else to do the dirty work for us. Yeah. So that we can continue to look all oh. glorious and nice to everybody else. We'll talk them into doing what we need them to do. But we're not going to get our hands mixed up in it. And that's what these, 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 these Jews were doing. They were trying to get Pilate to do their dirty work. Now, Jesus had been questioned by Anais and Caiaphas. And their next step in getting him executed was to convince the Roman leaders that he was a threat worthy of death. By this time, they had already condemned Jesus to death as a blasphemer under Jewish law. Since they were under the Roman rule, however, they did not have the authority to execute any criminals. They didn't call Jesus a criminal. Mm -hmm. They call him a criminal because they say he blasphemed. Yeah, thinking that he was right there along with God, which he was. It says that therefore they needed Pilate to carry out their sentence because they had a thing where they couldn't kill another man. It was not in their law to do so. So they had to get someone that could and that didn't mind doing it and that would do it to do it for them. But we have to realize that whatever God has planned is going to go the way God plans it to go. God sent Jesus down here for a reason. He came down here for a reason, to redeem us all back to yes. him. Yes. The Jewish rulers and officers were religious. Yeah, they were, but they weren't righteous. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> they were religious, but they weren't righteous. They would never enter Pilate's home because to go into a Gentile's home would have made them ceremonially unclean. And unable to eat at the Passover. Mm. What are they thinking about their stomachs? <laughs> Pilate did not adhere to or understand the Jewish religious practice. But he did not flunk them. Therefore he met them outside and asked them what they charged Jesus with. Understandably, Pilate immediately tried to dismiss this case and told the Jews to judge Jesus according to their own law. Mm -hmm. They responded by stating that it was unlawful for them to execute anyone. Mm -hmm. So if they wanted someone executed, they had to go get somebody else to do it because they are following the law. Mm -hmm. But they're executing their own. Mm -hmm. They wanted to execute one of their mm -hmm. own. Jesus appeared before Pilate. Jesus, I mean, Pilate rendered, re-entered his judgment hall and called Jesus to him. He then asked Jesus directly if he was the king of Jews. Jesus asked Pilate if he was asking this question on his own or if someone else directed him. Pilate sarcastically asked if he was a Jew likely indicating that he did not care about Jewish disputes. Jesus returned to the question about his kingship and stated that his kingdom is not of this world. In other words, it is of divine origin and substance. 
Pilate then went back out to face the crowd and declared that he found Jesus not guilty. He then mentioned a custom that he and the Jews had at Passover, the release of a prisoner. He suggested that he might release Jesus, their king, as a pass at the Passover feast. The Jewish leader and crowd, however, rejected the release of Jesus. Fear of the fire. Within a matter of hours after his arrest in Gethsemane, Jesus endured six trials. After being formally charged with blasphemy before the Sanhedrin, over which Caiaphas presided, Jesus was led away to Pilate, the Roman governor, the Hall of Judgment. is literally the praetorium, the resident of the governor. Since the governor's primary resident was in Caesarea, this alternate resident was used by Pilate whenever he was in Jerusalem. The Jewish leaders were very scrupulous, scrupulous about avoiding ceremonial defilement, so they refused to enter the Pilate's resident. It is ironic that they were so obsessed with avoiding defilement from contact with the Gentile, yet could be oblivious to the defilement that they would incur in condemning an innocent man to death by crucifixion. They had no clue what they were doing. They didn't know who they were messing with. And for them to want to crucify him, but yet don't want to walk into the judgment place, the judgment hall, is just crazy. Place, placating the Jewish leader, Pilate came outside to hear their complaint. As Roman governor, he alone held the legal power of life and death over those accused of crimes. Mm -hmm. Jesus' trial occurred at a time in which the Jewish authorities no longer were allowed to execute criminals themselves. Although the Jewish authority had already condemned Jesus to death, they knew that their condemnation had to be confirmed and carried out by Roman authority. Why would they, why would they want to crucify him? Just because he said that he was God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was. They needed to accept that fact. Look at all the miracles that he had done. Mm -hmm. No man has ever done that. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you accept him as God? Rather than explicitly state the controversial nature of Jesus' crime to a Gentile authority, they tried to get Pilate to take their word along as sufficient grounds for Jesus' execution. They couldn't even tell them what they were crucifying him for or wanted them crucified for. Mm -hmm. The word male factor in their time means evil doer. The word criminal would be a modern equivalent. So they were calling him a criminal. On numerous occasions, Jesus had told the disciples, his disciples, that he was headed to Jerusalem, where he would be rejected and killed. That the means of his death would be by crucifixion is implied in statements about him being lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all, all men unto me. And he did. In order for all these prophecies to be fulfilled, mm -hmm. the Jews needed to hand Jesus over to the Romans for crucifixion. Realizing that the Jewish religious leaders were trying to entangle him in some religious dispute, Pilate told them to deal with Jesus on their own. When they made clear that they wanted Jesus' death, a sentence beyond their legal authority, Pilate likely was surprised that Jesus could have done something to merit such a serious penalty. We would have to examine Jesus personally to ascertain his guilt or innocence for himself. 
Pilate took Jesus back into the praetorium to question him, away from the interference of the Jews of Jewish authorities. Like Luke tells us that the Jews had told Pilate, we found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Clearly, they were accusing Jesus of being politically, of being a political insurrectionist, and therefore a threat to Roman authority. <laughs> I'm not going to even say nothing. That's got to remind us of today's time, though. <laughs> a political insurrectionist. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm not going to say much on that. When asked pointedly if he claimed to be the king of the Jews, Jesus answered as he often did by asking another question. He wanted to know if this was Pilate's own inquiry or if he was merely repeating what others had told him. And you know that he was only merely repeating what others had told him. But he asked him anyway. Pilate may have been expressing his surprise that Jesus did not look like a pretender to the vacant throne of Judaism. He had expected to meet a, a, a sullen or belligerent rebel and met instead the calm majesty of confidence superiority. You met someone that was totally opposite of what these people are describing or what they said he was. Just by Jesus talking to him, he got to understanding that, hey, this isn't the guy that y'all are talking about. I don't see this in him. Pilate, I'm sorry, he could not reconcile the character of the prisoner with the charge brought against him. To Jesus' question, Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Obviously, he was not. And the grammatical form of the question expect a negative answer. As the chief woman official in the region, Pilate was not used to being questioned or challenged. That lets you know that Jesus wasn't afraid of nobody. Those Jews out there that was trying to get him crucified, they were. They were afraid of him. It didn't have to be. But Jesus wasn't afraid of anybody. He asked Pilate a question that Pilate wasn't used to being asked no question. He was the one that did all the questioning. As the chief Roman official in the region, Pilate was not used to being questioned or challenged. He wanted answers to his questions, not counter questions from the accused. Further, he had no interest in the Jews and their obsession with messiahs and prophecy. He needed to know only one thing. Did Jesus allege claim to be king of the Jews pose a threat to Roman occupation and stability? Was he planning to overthrow Roman rule? That's all Pilate wanted to know. And Jesus gave him a, a good answer to that. Pilate's agitated, agitated response indicates that he was feeling frustrated with the entire affair. What have you done, he asked Christ tearfully, but emphatically. Jesus' calmly profound response to Pilate and Payson changed the entire atmosphere of the interrogation. My kingdom is not of this world. It's significant on many levels. For Pilate, it was a direct clarification that Jesus was indeed no political threat to Roman. That's all Pilate wanted to know. That's all. Is that he was not a threat to Rome at all. I don't have to worry about this character. He's not going to be belligerent. He's not going to be crazy. He's not going to try to take over my throne. He's not going to try to overrun Rome. That's all Pilate wanted to know. And Jesus answered that for him so good by saying, My kingdom is not of this world. It's not of this world. Rome, empire, 
was of this present world only. The proof that Jesus had no such design upon Rome's authority was that his servant did not fight to prevent his arrest. Jesus' kingdom was of another kind entirely. When Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world, he was declaring that his kingdom was from another place or realm. It is a heavenly kingdom, spiritual in nature, and incomprehensible to the fallen human mind. Them Jews out there did not know this. They couldn't comprehend it whatsoever. He never could, they never could even come close to figuring out what it is that Jesus was trying to yes. tell them. Yes. Since Jesus has spoken of his kingdom, Pilate pressed him to tell him more about it. <laughs> he got kind of, he wanted to know more about this other word. I want to make sure that this other world ain't going to come over here and, and get, on, get in his world. Confirming that Pilate was correct in his assumption, Jesus revealed that the very reason he had been born was to bear witness to the truth and that all those who are of the truth hear and respond to his witness. Pilate may have thought Jesus was merely making philosophical speculation. But standing right before him was the very embodiment of divine truth itself. Pilate response, what is truth? Has puzzled commentators. It is uncertain whether his question was sincere or scornful. Most do think he was being cynical. Being an educated man, Pilate was likely familiar with many conflicting philosophical decisions on the nature of truth. Pilate asked him what is truth and then walked away from him. He said, as the Roman authority in Jerusalem, Pilate himself considered the arbiter of truth within his own jurisdiction. Apparently, the charges against Jesus brought by the chief priest had not passed mustard with him as truth. So they were lying. They weren't telling the truth. He therefore declared to them, I find him no fault at all. At all. This is one of three times in John's gospel that Pilate faithfully declared Jesus complete innocence. Pilate ended, intended his words in a strictly legal sense, but as with the unintended prophetic meaning in a statement by Caiaphas, these three declarations of Jesus' perfect innocence carried a prophetic and theological import for John's readers. They remain a thrice repeated and therefore supreme testimony of Christ's sinlessness. Since there ex since there exists, existed at this time an annual goodwill gesture of releasing one's prisoner at Passover, Pilate suggested that Jesus might be the one to be released at this time. But he apparently had underestimated the intense hatred. Listen at that word. Hatred. Hatred. Those cats hated Jesus. The Jewish leader had for Jesus. Pilate had found the innocent man from Nazareth guiltless of any crime punishable under Roman law. But instead of agreeing to his release, the chief priests and their cronies <laughs> ran fiercely against any such notion. They instead clamored voluntarily that word for the release of Barabbas, a notorious criminal who had who was come was a convicted insurrectionist and murderer. Mm -hmm. How ironic that they chose to compound their sins not only by condemning an innocent man, mm -hmm. but also by parting a murderer mm -hmm. and seditionist. Mm -hmm. And in a further ironic twist, 
Barabbas means son of a father. The true son of the heavenly father was being traded for a vile criminal with no real name. Some religious people do despicable things. Be careful how you treat others. What people you Some religious, not all religious, but some religious people do some despicable things. We should not expect straightforward answers from people bent on doing wrong. Come on now, we used to be back doing that day. They ask you a question, you get them to run around. The Lord uses the plan of evil people to bring about his own plan for our salvation. We need wisdom to tell if someone, if some people questions are sincere or hiding, hiding other gender. The heart of those who follow Jesus have been open to the truth. Like Jesus, we can be clear of wrongdoing and still suffer an unjust penalty. Trust God. Believe in his word. Jesus is the truth. He is the truth. And he was showing them that throughout this. And what nothing that they could do was going to stop what had already been prophesied. It was going to happen. They were just helping God along with his plan, even though they did not realize it. Let us bow. Most gracious and eternal Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name. We ask you, O oh Lord, that you continue to lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. We ask that you anoint our minds, our bodies, and our spirits to receive the truth and be able to go out and tell others about your mercy, your grace, and your goodness, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your word. We hope that it has fallen on good ears and not deaf ears, that they might go out and help someone else to understand that Jesus is the truth, yes. the light yes. of this world. Yes. We thank you, Father, and we bless you. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray and thank you. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. 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 amen.